Hello everybody, my name is Signature D and welcome back to this video. Today we'll be going over mixing. This is a mixing tutorial in Ableton Live. We will be focusing on one of my songs called Company, how I mixed it. Today I'm going to be specifically focusing on the instrumentation mixing. I'm going to leave vocal mixing for a separate video. So if you want to see that, make sure you stay subscribed. Hit the bell notification only if you interest only if you are interested and remember before we start this class chewing gum is not a substitute for brushing your teeth okay right anyway let's get in so first let's listen <laughs> So now we've heard a little bit, let's talk about mixing. So the first step before you do any EQ, any compression, adding reverb, anything like that. If you produce the track, mixing starts in how you arrange the song. So notice this, let me remove the drums, right? There are only two things going on, the bass and the guitar. It's easy to mix because there's only two things going on. In my guitar, I'm cutting everything below 129 hertz. So there's no low information coming here. I'm leaving all my lows for the sub. The sub lives here. The bass, I mean, lives here. Bass lives here. I leave it. The reason why I didn't cut all of these is because even though a bass is a bass, there's still a lot of information that's higher up that gives bass definition. So, it would, if I cut all of it out, you see how there's a bit more definition. You need some high, so don't don't band pass it like this. Don't do that. Like leave a little bit, unless you are going for a really clean sub bass. I don't want a really clean sub bass because I I don't need one in this context. Second mixing tip with bass: to create sub bass, you need a giant woofer, right? Like the cone, the speaker cone. You need a giant woofer your little iPhone is not going to be able to produce sub bass, right? So you want to leave some mid range information so that when you play a song on your phone, you can hear a little bit of bass. If you take all of that out, you're not going to hear any bass at all. The lowest thing you might hear is this and maybe a little bit of the kick, the high end of the kick, right? So make sure you're not cutting out too much. Anyway, so let's start with the guitar. Well, I already started. So first thing, let's remove, let's remove everything here and see how it sounds dry. First thing I'm doing, I'm putting an amp on it. So this amp, this plugin is free. There's a paid version where you could control all of these. I did not pay for it. I got it for free. So I, I can't adjust any of these settings but I, didn't, I don't need to. I'm using this effect pedal board Haven. Without. With. So I'm giving it tonal character. Next, EQ. I am boosting a little bit around 4.5k and I am cutting heavily 241 hertz because to me it felt like it was resonating a bit too much and sticking out when I was listening to it on other sources. Remember when you're mixing after you're done with the mix that shouldn't be it. You should go go in the car try different headphones 
just try as much audio sources as you can to listen to it to see how it sounds. Because just because it sounds good here, I mean, not necessarily mean it sounds good somewhere else. That's why you should invest in studio monitors. Because usually, if it sounds good on these, the speaker here, it sounds good everywhere else. Anyway, next, I'm doing a bunch of different effects here. The first one is a chorus. I have a chorus giving it one character, two with, right? Without it being panned. I'm giving it more stereo width, but I'm putting that signal to the left because I have a different signal, which I'm going to send to the right, which is called crystallizer. It's a sound toys plugin. See how it gives it that nice space together. Way much more character than if I just put one thing. Okay. Third effect is the dry, the dry knob. So all three, it's mixed in. The dry signal with nothing on it. This crystallizer, pan to the right, chorus to the left, all three together. And in Ableton, you could group effects. So I'm, I've grouped this and created a little mixer basically for it. Then this is an effect rack and I'm using a crystal choir preset and a CD automation. And I'm automating it to be much louder during the bridge. Right? Because I want to give it a lot more space during the bridge. So all of this is just one guitar and you see how I'm making it wide. I'm making it big out of mixing. Next, I'm using a channel EQ. I prefer to use the channel EQ in Ableton over. I think my room is haunted. Um, yeah, channel EQ over the regular EQ to do high boosts because it's a bit harsh. Like, listen. Sounds a bit harsh to me. This, to me, feels like a nicer, softer high boost. And I'm cutting out even more lows. Then I add a little bit of compression just for some more volume and to even it out even more. Then I add some OTT, some multiband dynamics. It's a preset in Ableton. It's really famous. If I crank it, it sounds squashed. Okay. Reduce it just to give a little more brightness and make it pop. And the final thing I'm doing is side chaining. So if you don't know what side chaining, side chaining is, it's basically if I'm side chaining one instrument to another. So whenever that instrument plays, the other one ducks. So I'm side chaining it to the kick. This is a mixing technique that would allow whatever you want to come through clearer. So anytime the kick hits, the volume of the guitar will drop. So extreme. Right? This is with the kick. Right? This is with the kick. Like extreme. Right? It just gives it a bit more clarity. I also side chain the kick to the bass. You usually want to do this. Well, it, it depends on the situation. You don't have to always side chain it. It really depends on the situation. But I am side chaining the kick to the bass. Right? Next. 
So there's the drums here. So I put my drums into a group and let's see, let's look at the individual, what we do first. So let's see on my clap, EQ, simple EQ, just a high pass filter, which is a high pass filter is cutting the lows. You're allowing the highs to pass through, right? Hat and snare. Same thing, high pass filter, um, boosting a little bit of 1K, 13K. Let's hear it. I wanted that to cut through. And I like the brightness that this adds. All right, next, there's an off snare which is like slightly offset from this to give it more groove and it's panned slightly to the right. And then my hi-hats. Now, why do I have an auto pan here? So extreme here. See, so it's going from left to right. You want, I put a little bit to add more movement to make it more interesting. These subtle things will make a track more interesting. Okay. Now, all these drums are in a group. And I process the group like this. A cut below 25 hertz. I don't need anything there. My system, my drums aren't going to be played in a club. My song isn't going to be played in a club. So... I'm cutting it because I don't need it. And then I'm boosting from 2K up. I should. Oh, let me. Without it. And with it, just a little more brightness. Then I use this preset called, well, this device or the effect called Drum Bus in Ableton. Gives it a little more punch. Notice I don't have it as a hundred percent. That's a bit too much for me for this for this song. So I put it at 50%. Nice balance. So you're hearing half of the dry signal with no with no effect on it and half of the wet signal. That's what this dry wet is doing. Then I put decapitator, one of my favorite plugins. It's a saturation plugin. And I used a drum preset called High Crispy Mix. I have the I have it at fifty percent, and without with it just tightens it up more, right? And guitar, drum, bass. These three things alone. <laughs> Right, sounding pretty good. All the other elements, just making sure I'm panning them so they're not not conflicting with the center. Same idea with uh, everything I go through. I cut the lows I don't need. I don't need it. I don't need it. Guitar solo. another effect rack so if you all want this effect rack like let me know and i could export it and like put it in the description or something in another video um yeah so if you know i i use a lot of effects i'm also using soothe on this one soothe is a plugin it's called soothe because it soothes the sound that you put it on it makes it less harsh so i, I found there a little bit of resonance like That's a little harsh to me, so. It just softens the sound a little bit more. Final thing, I do some parallel processing, okay? What that means is I'm putting effects not on the main track. I'm, put, I'm sending a copy of it to a different track and blending those two together. So. I'm, I, I like to 
take my entire track and send it to two reverbs and mix that in, okay? So the first one is Fab Fil a Fab Filter Pro. Both of them are Fab Filter Pros. But one is Lively Ambience. So that's how it sounds, right? And then the second one is a Subtle Room, right? So I, I personally feel like when I do this, it adds more glue to the entire thing. Because think about it, when you, in the real world, right, we aren't hearing things in a vacuum, like sound isn't like going directly into our ears. It's vibrates in the air, like there's air that needs to vibrate, right? And in any space you're in, unless you're in an anechoic chamber, there's going to be reverb, right? So... In my room, if I'm talking, my voice is not completely dry because there is the reverberation of my voice bouncing off the wall coming back, right? So you used to hear all these things. So I blend a little bit of reverbs in the whole thing so it sounds more like you're listening in a room and not through headphones. You don't want to overdo it though. It's easy to overdo it. So you take it off. subtle but I like it next saturation let's see I'm only sending the guitar here because I wanted more warmth right I, I use decapitator as my saturation dark fat mix preset just to get more warmth with the guitar and I blend it in my radiator once again, I wanted more warmth. It's a preset called Getting Warmer. And I have the noise engaged. And I feel, to me, it gives it a little... It gives it a nice vintage feel, feeling, which I was going for a track. You see, it just lifts. It lifts the entire thing. And then finally, for extra punch on the drums, I have a radiator here, drum puncher preset, and I send only drums here. This is the send. Without. Weak. With. So, yeah, that's pretty much it with the track. So, if you learned anything, please like, please subscribe, only if you're interested. I will be making more of these videos. I'll probably do a dedicated video just explaining what this YouTube channel is about and all that blah, blah, blah. All right? So, anyway, thanks for watching. 